Welcome to the Weather Insights Tropical Debriefing for Saturday, July 27th. I'm meteorologist Scott Pitney, along with meteorologist Jeff Lindner. Jeff, we've had a few weeks off, and as expected, the tropics are we're expected to get active again. And now we have a disturbance. The National Hurricane Center is giving a 20, or excuse me, a 30% chance of development. It's 20% yesterday. Now over the next seven days days and we're we continue to see these waves come off of the coast of africa there's still a dry saharan layer dust uh, out there large plume of it but um, but now we're we've got something to watch over the next seven days we're also at least locally here in texas we're uh, still raining on on this saturday as we have been all week that trough that's been hanging out over Southeast Texas, still with us, and, and Southeast Texas in the Western Gulf. So the rain persists, but we're expecting some ridging to build in starting Monday to move that further off to the east and, and eventually on its way out of here. Yeah, you can clearly see the trough here in, along the Texas coast. And so we're, we continue to get the showers really along the coast and then some lighter rains inland. And I think we'll do this again tomorrow morning. Sunday morning, and then probably the ridging builds in. I don't think we completely go dry, but uh, we get back into maybe a more typical summer pattern with isolated scattered showers, thunderstorms in the afternoon on the sea breeze. And we're going to heat up. I mean, I think the the high yesterday in Houston, if I'm not wrong, was 78 or 79, which was the lowest high temperature ever recorded uh, for yesterday. So can't be complaining about the heat. Yeah, it's humid, but it certainly has not been hot really since barrel. I mean, we had a little bit of heat after barrel temperatures up in the low nineties, but it's, it's been a relatively mild, uh, July and a very wet July uh, yeah. for a lot of coastal Texas. So really beneficial, complete contrast from the last couple of years where it's just been hot and dry, but looking out here in the Atlantic, you can see the, the intertropical convergence zone, we're starting to see some increasing showers and thunderstorms along that, some more robustness to the waves coming off Africa. Like you mentioned, there's still this stable dry layer here to the north. Um, you can see with these kind of speckled clouds and this kind of milky appearance, this is dust and, and dry air coming off of Africa. But the Atlantic is slowly going toward a more favorable state. So we've been relatively unfavorable in the Atlantic since post-barrel. And now we're moving toward, obviously, August, it, things become more favorable anyways, but there's also a pulse of rising air moving across the eastern Pacific now that will be spreading into the Atlantic. And so I suspect over the next seven days or so, we're going to see an increase in just showers and thunderstorms in general across the Atlantic Basin, kind of a decreasing in the amount of dust out here, and just the general overall more... Uh, favorable look here to the Atlantic Basin, and, and that could potentially encourage one or, or two of these waves that are kind of festering down here. Um, not a lot of movement with them, interestingly enough, but yeah. uh, kind of down here uh, in the central Atlantic to potentially grow into something as they come off to the west. And so we're, we're the Hurricane Center is watching uh, that area down here in the central Atlantic. This is the European ensembles, and anytime you're talking seven to 10 days out, it's best to look at the ensembles, which is the multi uh, different runs of the same model instead of the deterministic runs. Now there's deterministic runs out there, the GFS, the European, the Canadian, they all show something in and around the Gulf or Florida or off the Southeast US coast uh, next weekend and early next week. But I kind of encourage people to stay away from the deterministic run because if you've been watching them over the last couple of days, they've been varying widely between runs. And so it's, it's a more, uh, at this time frame, it's better to look at the, the, uh, the picture of the ensembles. And this is the European ensembles, and this is for next uh, Monday morning. And you can see all these little red dots here are potential for where the is potentially the location for any sort of tropical system. You can see there's a big spread here. We're talking uh, all the way from the southwestern Atlantic, uh, Florida Peninsula, possibly over towards the east or central Gulf of Mexico. And so that, that tells you there's a lot of uncertainty as we get down the road here where something could potentially be. And I would say, oh, maybe about half or so of these ensembles are producing development. And so th there's a pretty decent signal here that somewhere off the Southeast U.S. coast around uh, early next week, there could be some sort of tropical system. Uh, GFS is very different. This is the GFS ensemble. And you can see it's much less aggressive, not showing a whole lot. A couple, couple features here. 
Uh, generally the same area, so there's a little bit of consistency, but uh, much lower on the development chances. The GFS has been sort of slow on trying to do anything with this, and it may be some of the feedback it's getting here in the Eastern Pacific. You can see it's very aggressive with an Eastern Pacific uh, tropical system, and that, that could be uh, a little bit incorrect. There's a little bit of a potential of bias here with the GFS and how quickly it moves some of that rising air into the Gulf of Mexico. So, you know, this morning is just a, hey, by the way, it's hurricane season. Yeah. There's potentially a little something out there. I wouldn't get overly worried about it at this point. Something to watch. Nothing is going to happen anywhere over the next three or four days. This is we're talking later next week, next weekend into the into the early part of the following week. So just a reminder that we're heading into August and typically things pick up as we get into August. Yeah, a lot of variables with this one, Jeff, and they can change and they will change. So, uh, like you said, just uh, just a heads up. We're we're likely getting uh, back to a busy tropical season, and this is just kind of the beginning. So, um, as we learn with barrel, check back often, and that's why we have these podcasts to keep you informed from a trusted source. We'd like to remind you to to subscribe to the Weather Insights podcast channel, the YouTube uh, channel that we have on YouTube, and make sure you click the notification bells too. So when you are subscribed, you'll be notified of the latest podcast and we'll see you on the next Weather Insights podcast. Thank you, Jeff.